Matt, it's Carlo, it's the it's the WTM info drop. There's so much to unpack, as the kids say. I think the best way to go is in not in order of the release listings, but in order of the weekend. What do you think about that? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so in that regards, because there's so fucking much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> are, we, are, we allowed to curse? are we allowed to curse in this podcast? On your, on your podcast, I believe we can. Okay, so I guess I guess the first thing, technically, if we're going from a time prior to registration, prior to Friday, would be contender slash legacy status and team relay. Yes, and there's there's a lot of news on that, isn't there? Yeah, and if I were Will Hicks, I would read it to you, but I'm not. So I just want to know how you feel about it. <laughs> I thought you were going to read it to me. I'm like, I'm ready to be like spoon fed here. Well, I mean, uh, this isn't, so this part isn't news. 35 miles female, 40 miles male for contender status, 45 miles for the relay, two or four people, right? Right. So that's not new. Or 2018 WTM 75 plus legionnaire status of 50 plus mutters by the time of WTM 2019. So that's all the same as last year, correct? Or were the miles increased? Um, I believe. Oh goodness, this is great you, podcast. I don't know. Is an acceptable you. answer. Yes, I don't recall. Um, no, thirty-five miles is for female, forty for male. Uh, I believe that is the same. Okay, so. The only real difference is there's no such thing as elite contender because they don't give away money anymore. Right, because anybody – right. And then did you also see – I thought this one kind of caught my eye. It said uh, only verified high-level athletes or some truly inspirational stories will be considered. Uh, <laughs> so you can, you can apply for contender status, I guess, if you have a truly inspirational story. I, I didn't know – that that works, but I guess you can. I don't well, recall that being the case before, but no, that's definitely not. And I think that's a going hard in the paint on we don't do money anymore, so let's focus on what we were good at, which is community. Right, and that's boy. If, if you've read through this, it's definitely uh, they're they're definitely going like full court press with the with the kind of community based uh, event this year, which I think is good. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think, you know, you could call it a PR move for the no money thing, but it's actually not wrong. It really is what what Mutter was about. It was Absolutely. right. It was about hey, we're not about competition except for maybe this one time a year. We're really about contenders. I mean, we're really about community. And this time once a year, we put up this big money, but it's still a huge community event. But then they just went through this you know, weird, you know, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Teenage phase where for two years they were like, you know what? We're going to give away a shitload of money. Yeah. Then they went, Oh, we need, we need that money. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, yeah, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be fun to see. I think I don't, I don't want to, are we moving along to the, uh, or we still want to go with our contender status? Well, I think, I think, um, you know, we definitely, there's definitely room for complaining and butthurtness, right? In there, right? When they say, because well, it used to be, well, it used to be you have to, you have to uh, apply, right? So, you know, I finished second five years, let's say, you know, I finished second five years ago and I haven't raced in a while, but I'd like to do it. Could I do like that makes sense for the contender, right? Um, right. The, right. The right in the right in vote. The um the inspirational story thing is like, well, let's just say I don't know Jim Campbell, right? Well, I've done more mutters than anyone, so shouldn't I be elite status, right, or contender, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, although although he has legionnaire status anyway, but. You know, I'm not picking on Jim. I do pick on Jim sometimes. I'm not right this moment, but <laughs> I'm sure but he appreciates just, that. But let's just say anyone with a quote unquote, you know, sob story or cancer right. in the fam- cancer in the family, it just seems to open it up to some weird stuff. Would you agree? I would agree. Yeah. And I, I'm assuming um, 
Well, let's see. I mean, I guess I'm guessing that's also kind of where some of the adaptive athletes might fit in. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. See, look at you seeing the positive of it all. So let's, let's yeah. go straight from that to the legacy status. Legacy status is our new category meant to honor yep. our WTM community who have stuck with us through thick and thin mud, freezing nights in Jersey and Sam Storms in Vegas. Raise your hand if you've done those things. Are you raising your hand? You know, it's funny. I, I came in one year too late. I did not do any New Jersey and I missed the sandstorm by a year. 2015 okay. well, was my first. All right. Well, you've got uh, the easy year in not, Vegas, and you've got the freezing year in Atlanta. Yeah. I'm not legacy status, though. I've only done – I've done World three, three times. Athletes who have completed five or more WTMs will receive a legacy bib at registration. And if it's one thing mutters love, it's the fucking bib bling, bro. So that's awesome. Dude, you know what? You are – that is so – you're so right. You are so, and I, and I kind of thought people like over, oversold that, but no, people love their bibs and, and you know what? Get on it. Why not? So if you're on track to hit five after this year, you'll get it at the brunch. Now, legacy status can be found here. I tapped it briefly. Okay. I double tapped it and it's not a ton of names. So this has to be wrong. Like I scrolled through it pretty quickly. Um, okay. And it just, it's got to be wrong. There's got to be more people that have done four, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, I just opened it right now. I'm like, okay. Way to, be on, way, to be, way to be prepared for this call. Hey, thanks. So you're a, right. There's not, there's not as many as I would think. Right, you, can, you can scroll through pretty quickly. And like, yeah. you know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't count. By the time Will does a podcast on this, I'm sure he will have it fucking broken down by country and you know everything else that work. guy right yeah uh, looks like isan for conde has done five he's the done the most miles for anyone named isan this side of the mississippi we walter love you by the lion way, has there. done walter lyons in there trevor psychos there you go look at these guys well i recognize some of these names well, of course you do. The most important ones are the are the all timers, right? Which gets less yes. every year, right? Let's let's yep. read those people off. They deserve it. Rob Greer, never even heard of yep. him. Yep. Seven. Mark Bonchek, seven. Mandy Baskin, the only woman left to have done all seven. However, I'll throw in for my girl Corinne Colon. Uh, she's been at every single one. The only one she didn't run was when she was crewing for her husband pregnant. So I give her I give her a seven with an asterisk. Ken Medley, seven. Joshua Kajawa, seven. How do we not know these names? I sound like you guys. I sound like an idiot. Who's this guy? Who's our guy? <laughs> I sound like you guys, a.k.a. the idiot. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Go on. There's a lot of seven names. Uh, Edward Harris. Ooh, there's there's breaking news. KC, is, his actual name is Edward. Who knew that? Oh, I, I did know that, but I so call there's, him KC. There's Corinne. They do give her seven. Ooh, they do give her seven. Wait a minute. Has there been eight? How many has there been? <laughs> no, there's. It's been seven because Walter Lyon has seven, and you know he's been to all of them. Because so Team gave, Four Eyes has been to all of them. So they gave Corinne seven. Um, yeah. Um, ben Kirkup, Brandon Smith. First of all, I don't know where I am. In. Says, what's that? Little little pet peeve of mine. Alphabetized by first name, womp womp. You never do that. People have the I'm, same first name. I was trying to figure out how you were doing that. I'm like, oh, I see what they did. Okay. And they gave yes. Jim and they gave Jim Campbell spelled wrong four, unless that's a different Jim Campbell. Oh. Well, if it's Facebook, he goes by Campbell Jim for some reason. Either way, legacy status is fascinating. I want credit for my media lapse, so I think I might have earned this. Oh, there you go. I did, I did a lot. Let me just think out loud here because it's one thing people like to listen to on podcasts. It's people thinking out loud. Oh, absolutely. Um, I did Media Lab 2013. I DNF'd 2014, which was the first year in the desert. Yep. Sandstorm. I think, I think I did a Media Lab in 15 and 16. You were definitely Media in 15. I remember that because that, that was when we kind of met. Right, but I'm saying if I did a media, I've been to all of them except the first. I'm just curious if I did a lap or not in 15 and 16. I certainly didn't the last two years when I was working for Mudder, um, even though I said I would, but I'm a pussy and did not. Let's move on, didn't shall we? Get, There's so much to cover. Wait, didn't you get 50 and 16? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, the one year I did it. 
So that's that's, yeah, that. that's, when, that's when I got hurt and I saw you and Josh out there later on. Right. Yeah, there you go. Thank, Dude, thank give yourself you credit. You have 50 miles. Thank you for acknowledging my 50. I appreciate that. All right. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. Yes. yes. Let's move on to Friday. Um, Friday. I feel like you should read this one because it's so exciting. Well, about, okay. <laughs> Why have a hot take, Matt, when you can ah! have a hot lap? So, hey, by the way, that was so good that I'm going to let you use that when you and Josh break this down. And I won't even just pretend people that haven't heard it because we, we have audience that doesn't cross over. All right. That's that's why I got you on this call for those kind of gems. Oh, thank you, thank you. That Say just, again, that's though, just I kind of stepped on you. I was so excited. Say it again. It's okay. So here we go. Oh, I'll do my best to say why to read a, on a podcast. This is great, whole, captivating. But do the whole sentence. Why have a do the whole sentence? Oh, I said uh, why have a hot take when you could have the Friday hot lap? What is a hot lap? You ask, Matty Davis. Let me tell you what a hot lap is. We all know our WTM courses are epic and badass, but not everyone in the Tough Mudder community is ready to take on 24 hours like our WTMers. This year, we wanted to share the magic that is WTM with the entire community and are debuting the Friday Hot Lap. Come run an early lap of the WTM course with your fellow mudders, inclusive of all obstacles. The Hot Lap is open to registered participants, pit crew, spectators, your Aunt Carol, your weird neighbor, Ted from HR, you get the point. See the extra details. See the extra details below. So obviously, it's at the same place that WTM is because you're running that lap. So it's uh, free if you register for WTM. It's twenty-five bucks per pit crew member, and then there's a fifty-dollar general admission. Now, how about that? I. I'm not sure how I feel about this. About um, the hot lap in general or or charging people for it? No, no, no. I'm fine with charging. I'm fine with that. That's that's fine. 50 is is you're basically getting to do a tough mutter for 50 bucks and be a part of a pretty cool thing. For pit yeah. crew members, I think for pit I think it's a no-brainer for a pit crew member, right? Yeah. Yep. Hey man, I traveled all this fucking way. I may as well bring some clothes and run a lap, right? I got to deal with your piss stained wetsuit. Right. Is it a bright idea, even having fun, to run a lap on Friday when you've got to be up, you know, for 24? Like, like, is it, like you fall, you get hurt on block nest, you're like, what the fuck? My weekend is fucked. Or, or my over. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, okay. Well, then I think, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I think the idea of just like, you know, taking a nice, take it nice and easy and, I mean, you know, running five miles. I don't think that's so much a big deal, but yeah, I mean, I think if I was competing, I might, I might use a little caution, like maybe let my pit crew go and hit the obstacle or something. I don't know. Depending on the obstacle, I'm not sure if I would do it or not. Um, you know, if it was something like cage crawl or something, it'd be kind of fun because I enjoy that one and you can't really get too sideways in that. Why'd you scowl at me? Do you not like cage crawl? There are people who are deathly terrified of cage crawl and then there are people who are not. I don't know that anyone puts it up there like, you know what obstacle I love? Cage crawl. Oh, it's just so relaxing to me. You get in there, you kind of tilt your head back, and you just glide, man. You just take some deep breaths and glide on by. I love it. It totally calms me down. If it's an afternoon, like, lap, hang on a second. I have to yell at Jack Bauer. <laughs> hey, buddy, you're only two hours late. I, it's my time. Oh, my God. Yeah, never expected to be at your time. Huh. All right. Well, are you, are you still able to do it? Or? I'm in the middle of another call now that should have started an hour ago, but that a retard couldn't couldn't fucking. Oh my god! Didn't yeah, we determine that was on your end? By the way. <laughs> Sorry, man. I I <laughs> figured that based on how we always do it, uh, it was gonna be. It was gonna be eight o'clock my time. Okay, my mistake. Uh, let's okay. try. Let's try tonight. I'll message you later. Okay. Fucking Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer. Um. 
Uh, I like that you get to do all the obstacles, right? So you get yeah. you do you do get to see the course. Maybe maybe you run your pit crew does the obstacles, and you just kind of get a nice little layout of the course. Yeah, I mean it's um, yeah. I like I like the idea. I like. I would like the I like the idea of a um, a preview of the course if I was going to run it the next day. Um, I mean, it it can't be a whole lot. I mean, I don't know what what how much they can really change. There's only so much elevation at that site. Um, it's not like Vegas where they could just send you up another part of the hill or something. Um, but uh, but yeah, I would I would definitely participate in that. But like you said, I do not know if I would be doing all of the obstacles. Um. I do, I do, I yeah. I guess I like the idea. I don't know. It, it also like the other thing is that again, you pack a certain amount. You got a lot to worry about. Do you really want to go through another set of clothes? Like, do you have to get wet and then not wear again? That's true. That's the what I'm thinking about. Now I live here, so for me it would be a no-brainer. But if I didn't live here, I don't know if I'd want to do the hot lap or not. Yeah, I could see that. I uh, yeah, I would, I would do it. I think uh, depending on how my how my setup went that morning. You know, if I got everything up and, and going kind of early and I felt good and had a little time to relax, yeah, I could see myself heading out with my crew. Now, I, we sort of skipped over when do you actually get, when do you register? Is registration on site at Friday? Did so, we- oh, by the way, it's, it's from 2 to 4 p.m. and there's only one wave. So it's right. not like you can do it whenever you want. No, no, no. You go, basically, you go, and then I'm guessing they're sweeping the course at 3.30. Yeah, yeah. Everybody goes at 2, yeah. however many people that is. Um, yeah, so it's, there is a registration. Uh, it's through the active.com uh, deal, it looks like. And, uh, yeah, it says, find your world's toughest matter registration and click purchase merchandise. And I guess in the purchase right, merchandise I'm, section, you'll find it. But I'm saying in terms of timing... When are we actually standing in line to get registered? Is that on here? Is that on this email? Oh, that's a great question, Matt. Uh, it doesn't say, but I would assume it is, because uh, then it goes straight into the Friday night stuff. I would assume it would be, oh, I mean, my assumption would be it would be the same, like, what is it, 9 a.m., whenever it usually is, and everyone gets there at, like, 6 or 7? Oh, the last year wasn't too bad. The lines weren't horrible last year from what I saw. Granted, I wasn't standing in them, so that was nice. All right, let's move on. Yeah, um, that's a good idea. Uh, the community dinner. Uh, for the first time yeah. ever, it says, for the first time ever, we're teaming up with the community to bring all Hungry Mutters together under one roof. Not exactly true. I'm pretty sure that uh, Sharkbait and crew were doing the community dinners and there was like the competing dinners. And then one year WTM was like, or TM was like, hey, can we do it together? So didn't they already team up once before? Uh, no, they have not. I believe this is the first time. Okay. Um, uh, either Which way. Which might be why they put for the first time ever. But I don't well, know. I just said <laughs> either way. It yes. is Wild Heaven Beer West End, which is next to last year's, literally next to last year's uh, Friday night dinner, which happens to be 0. .0002 for Matt's house, so I will be there. Yeah, yes, I will be. There. That was a. I like that place. It's kind of a warehouse districty kind of. Uh, yeah, kind of a so, place. So, so that area, there used to be one brewery, and now there are four or five. So That's... I actually like it. I like it for the bar crawl on Monday as well. I don't know if that's what they're doing, but oh, I don't know what the bar crawl is. I haven't seen that. But they should, I say make it that place because we jokingly call it the crawl because you don't want to, it's the opposite of the bar crawl. You just go to one place. But because there's four different breweries, you could could shortly walk to four different ones. However, it's Monday. I don't know if they're open, blah, blah, blah. Forget what I just said. Um, Got it. Forgot it. They're going to show up at 630 and do the talk, which in the past was sometimes really important information from, say, a Nolan Comble. So I don't know what it's going to be. And they actually showed, like, the, the reason I remember in the past having not gone to that one and gone to the community one, you know, we started learning that, oh, they did, like, a little course preview stuff at that, and that would have been good to see. Now, of course, given the Friday hot lap, we will all have already have previewed the course, or some of us have previewed the course. So, 
yeah, that wouldn't be quite as necessary. All right, let's move on to camping, which I did. I thought they learned last year, not a lot of people did, yet here it is back again. Do you know anybody who camped last year? I believe, uh, well, by, if by camping you mean had a giant RV, then I know, I believe Chris Betcher had a really large RV. Um, but I don't know about anybody who literally, like, like pitched a tent. Was it filled with sexual devices? I don't. I did not go on board. Probably for that reason, for fear of my own safety. I probably stayed away from the Chris Betcher motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Chris. I know, two, fun, guy, I know two guys who did because I interviewed them early on Saturday when we were walking around getting content. There was these two guys who had like icicles on their faces. And they were like, we've yeah. been here all, and they were like, we've been here all night. I'm like, ooh, that sucks. It was really cold last night. They're like, yeah, maybe it wasn't too smart. Um, so it's an awesome idea if it's 65 degrees. Right. Not if yeah, it's it says, 45, uh, not if it's oh, 45 degrees. Oh, so okay. Now in reading this, it sounds like they're doing kind of what they've been doing at the at the toughest events this year as well, which is their they're uh, putting, bring, making a big campfire. They, they, they string lights and they have campfires and they have s'mores and stuff like that. That's something they do uh, in the pit area at the toughest, or not, I think, well, technically they call them the RTMs, the Regional Tough Mudders. Um, that's the, you know, HQ talk, if you will. But uh, so it sounds like, because it says, what to expect, chill vibes with fellow mudders, WTM battle stories over the campfire, Throwback flicks, because they show movies. Uh, s'mores, s'mores, s'mores. So you get three s'mores. But um, uh, Again, you know, in theory, on paper, sounds great, right? Like, yeah. That's fun. But I think those of us that have done the event just know what kind of mental and physical toll the event is. And yeah. as much as those things are great, I like, how about, you know, pillows, pillows, pillows? Like, how about yes, a really... I want a re- a really good night's sleep. I want a warm bed that night before, or even if it's a cool bed, whatever it needs, I just want a bed. And I want blankets and I want pillows. You're right. Because it because again, like it is a fun event, and many of us are not racing for money, but we are racing for our personal best. You yeah. give me you give me your best and I'll see you at the finish line, right? What is <laughs> what, what what you you should have Sean on. There you go. I, I'm I gonna cut, I'm gonna cut to it right here. Hang on, we'll leave room okay. for an edit. I'm gonna cut to it. Okay, now just cut to it. Uh, um, it gets me going every time. Odds, so, no, but odds of they, me cutting to it. What's 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 odds of me actually going to find that clip and putting it in there? Do you oh, think? you'll you'll you'll. I, I have faith. You're a professional. You'll do Thank it, you. awesome. dude. Okay, you like. Okay, I don't. Okay, you. I was I was going to about to go back to last year for a second, but um. Well, well you can say you about last have, year. I feel like you were gonna give me a compliment, and I like those. I go. Oh, I'm actually going to compliment you, because remember last year how I, uh, I, I guessed what the stacks was going to be. Yes. And you were like, you were talking with, you were doing the interview with Will Hicks by the bathrooms, and you're like, I'm going to go back and pull that, pull that audio, and you did. And I was like, and it was, and I was like, no way. He actually went back and pulled the audio. That yes. was fantastic. I was super, and maybe because it was had, it was my voice, and I was excited about that too. But whatever, it was still great. Dude. I was excited you did that. Dude, let's let's relive that. I'm not going to go find it again, but I so I think I told you this that I actually knew because I'm on the production team. I just did air quotes. I right. knew I knew what Stacks was. And it was great secret to keep. It didn't make the reveal any less exciting, right? It was still super right. exciting. The only difference that really gave me an erection was that they were going to make it progressively harder. Like the first, you know, few laps, it was going to be one container, and then it was going to be two containers, like as the night. Oh, went on. Really? Well, I didn't know that actually. But that was the original. So we're talking like, you know, this August September idea, right? And then as yeah. we got closer, it was like, okay, logistically, we can't pull this off. We it's just going to be this right. big giant thing. But I was like, no fucking way. Like this is going to be. Oh. But I saw that like, but I but I saw the schematics and whatnot for it. And so when you said that, I was like, no way. <laughs> and I swear, I knew nothing. All I, oh, all I knew. Of course you didn't. Nobody yeah. did. Yeah. Okay, good. So 
people somehow think that I that I have like I can get inside information, and I'm like I really can't. Because honestly, like at that. Seriously, if that like there's certain things that get leaked out, that wasn't something that was like, you know, Nolan knew, the production team knew, and like not even all the people in the office was, would even know that. So anyway, good job. Right. So let's let's back up. Yeah. Damn. So one thing I, I want to say about this camping thing is I mean, knowing Tough Mudder, I imagine they do their homework and they and they try to see what kind of interest there is, because they've I mean, they said there's four hundred spots available for camping. So I don't know. I mean, I know the UK folks love to camp. But like, that's I don't a know thing over there. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, that's a lot of space, man. Well, I, forget the amount of spaces available. I'm just curious how many how many did it last year, and I can talk to them maybe off record and find out because it's because it's back. Now here's here's an interesting thing though Tell me. about this general admission ticket. Ah uh, uh, yes, okay. So general admission ticket is geared towards those in the Mudder community who want to attend but aren't participating or pitting. So you get access to the village, okay? Yeah. Camping for Friday and Saturday night, right? Yep. It's separate from the pit and doesn't include access to the Friday hot lap. I guess what they're saying is, Nobody can be in the pit without paying for it, which is hasn't that always kind of been the rule? Like they kind of like yes. check everybody's that's, fucking badge. Like that's they, how it should. That's how it's supposed to be. Yes. Yep. So here's a chance. If you're, I mean, why not just call it? A, usually, you would just buy the pit pass. Yeah. For, for your I mean, seven really. family members, even if they weren't all pitting, you just go ahead and buy it for them. Give them the blue bib. Off they go. That's exactly right. Yeah, dude, they have been hardcore. If I don't have hardcore mutter credentials on me, I get fucking sent back. Like at 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 these things, like they get pretty serious. Those security guards get serious about WWE. Dude, I got I had one of those guys put his hand on my shoulder, and I was like, and it was like twice as big as my shoulder last year, and and that was just because he didn't see my my media badge. But right. I went I went under the I went under the tape at the start line. He's like, whoa, where are you going, man? And I was like, right. I. And then he's like, oh, no, you're cool. Never mind. And I was like, oh, poof. thought that was the end of me. He didn't recognize your, your name on your dry robe. Evidently not. I didn't have it at that point yet. Okay, so we've been talking for half an hour. We haven't even, we were not, we're not even on Friday night yet. We're like, we, we haven't even gone to bed yet. Can we go to bed now and wake up race day morning? We can, yes. Okay. What's that? What's that? And there's so much going on here. I know. And by the way, <laughs> you got to love even in this email that we're looking at the amount of colors and fonts is amazing we assume that it'll be somewhat updated by the time they actually release something but oh boy tm they're really good at, at this they are they are doing it right i like it okay so okay so do, let's go to should we go to i guess awards or what would what would you call next yeah, because we can't. I mean, the rules are, they haven't changed much, right? We're not going to, I don't know how deep you want to dive into rules because. We'll, uh, we'll let Will read all those. Yep. He's good at that. All right. Yes. Let's go. Prizing and Achievement Awards. How about that? Yes. All right. Go for it. Um, hang on. I was just, I was just, I clicked on the rules. <laughs> I know. I, I had to get back to it. I'm like, oh, okay. And I have the slowest computer known to man, so. Uh, we've added updates on Obstacle Bypass, Golden Carabiner, and we'll look to have a surprise or two as we get closer to the event. Team Relay, have no fear. We've updated Team Relay to Mirror 2019 Toughest, so you and your team can enjoy your journey together. What what was the toughest rule? People didn't like, what, what's, what, what changed there? Uh, what was it? What did he say? Team Relay. I have no fear. We've updated Team Relay to Mirror 2019. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what was what. Uh, All right, here we go. Uh, yeah. Here's a big one. Here's okay. a big one. Here's a big one. I'm gonna read this one word for word. Oh Wait. yeah, the, actually, I, yeah. Please do. I like this one. Okay, medical. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your feedback on this point. We've reviewed and determined the 30 minutes of medical detention, <laughs> attention, leading to a medical DQ isn't fair. 
to those athletes that are safely able to continue in the race. We've amended our rules to reflect that injuries will be reviewed on a case-by-case basis and eligibility to continue in the race will be determined by senior medical officials, all caps, or whatever. The right. decision the decision of the senior medical official sat on site is final and not subject to appeal. Please stay tuned for more updates on specific injuries. Our medical officials will not allow once reported. Will not allow once reported? What does that mean? So... I almost broke my leg. It takes them 30 minutes to realize I didn't break my leg and I can continue. So I'm now allowed to continue running. That's is right. that what they're saying? Yes. Yes. And um, which I think is good because I think some people were kind of like, no, no, you know, you're, you're kind of at the, I mean, now granted, they're the medical professionals. But yeah, I think uh, when I read this, I was like, this is good. This is good. Well, here's the thing. Um, so first of all, first year they unveiled this was 45 minutes. I think this was 2013 or 14 when they realized they had to start doing this because medical tent fills up. And that's really what it's about yeah. is keeping right. the medical tent free. Hey, you have 30 minutes now get back on out of here because we want you to continue your race. Not like you're cheating if you're sitting here because at the end of the day, if you're sitting in there, you're not getting miles. So you want to right? it's more about just keeping the med tent free. And they made an even smarter move when either last year or the year before for the first time, rather than putting the tent at the end of the lap where you come in and you're freezing, you go straight there. They moved it to the beginning. So now you come out, you, you could, you could just stay in your tent rather than hiding in the medical tent. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. I do. Yes. So I've done, I've done both. Right, but it makes sense because if you come back from freezing your ass off and you see that warm fucking tent that with fires oh, going in it, you're like, "Fuck yeah, I'm heading straight for medical." Now, I, that, yep, right. Now that isn't an option. You go to your own tent. If you want to see medical, you've got to come all the way back out to see them before you continue. Um, again, I don't see it as a problem only because if you if you stay off course longer and go back in. That's not unfair because you're not getting more miles. Is that correct? Right. There's no way you can cheat yep. the system with this, right? Right. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what they're what they're what they're getting after there too, which I think is good. Study the rules, love the rules, obey the rules. Um. Yeah, I still think more than anything, it's about clearing people out of the medical tent and not having that thing be, you know whatever. Yeah. I mean, okay. I knew, I knew in, was it 2017? I, I was freezing and I knew I had 30 minutes in my pocket where I could sit in there and get warm and get some hot chocolate. And so we spent 29 minutes in there, you know, just for the sole purpose of trying to get warm. And then off we went and it was like, let me know when I'm at 28 minutes and I'll get out of your face. I promise. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it looks like um, there'll be some fun stuff, bypass, carabiners, blah, 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 yeah. blah. Yeah, and the, the bypass is what they're doing during – they do that during the, the, the toughests right now also. And I think it's after you hit uh, – after you hit mile 30, at the end of each lap, you start getting a rubber wristband that you can use to bypass an obstacle. Um you know, during, well, whenever you want, you can, you can collect them. You can, you know, never use them if you don't want. A lot of people actually, the, the really fast folks from what I saw, were actually using them on a uh, Mutterhorn just because it's so, it's time so, consuming. so time consuming. Exactly. All right. So, so I think there's some interesting stuff here in awards. Yeah. Um, achievement awards way down here after all the stuff about 25 and 50 and a lot of good stuff. Yep. Is completion of each lap after 30 miles obstacle bypass award. So yeah. each lap after 30 miles, you could get a bunch of those. And then your last lap, just fucking sprint the fucking thing. You, right? You could. Yeah. That's absolutely right. There's also going to be some on course challenges, which equal a carabiner. Back in the day, it was did you get King of Swingers or not, right? Ugh, that answer is no. So that'll be fun. Um, yeah. 
And then the rest of it is the standard stuff. 25, 50, 75 all get patches. Sorry, 25 and 50 get – 25 gets a patch, 50 gets a bib, 75 gets a bib and a free entry in the toughest the next year. 100 yep. gets you the jacket. 125. No. Dark Platinum Big free lifetime entry. That Nobody's getting 125 miles. Nobody. Okay. Okay. But, sprint lap, green sprint I mean, bib. please try. Sprint lap, green sprint bib, free tough mutter entry. So Chris Miloski or whatever his name is. What's that guy's name? Oh, yeah. He'll get uh, one. Or uh, didn't Wesley Kerr got it one year? In the – yeah, I don't remember. Um, In the desert. But, but it's for all categories. So team category oh, gets right. it too, right. Now, here's what's interesting. Age group awards. Each age yes. group category will receive an age group winner medal and free RTM 2020. 18 to 24, and then it's five years all the way up to 50. Right? And then it's 50 and up. So yep. get ready for Ooh. the 50, get ready for the 59-year-olds to bitch. Um, <laughs> that's good. Yes, that's true. Um, Someone's now, gonna be upset. Now, I definitely see some possible mm, shenanigans with this. With with the age group? Yeah, because we all Don't know me. we all know it's that the WTM is not the most regulated race there is, but we assume people going for the top mileage are pretty legit, the Ryan Atkinses of the world, because cameras are yes. on them, et cetera, et cetera. Who knows where the fuck right. the leaders are at any given time? Oh, I see what you're saying. So I'm 45 to 49. As am I. And I see you doing something not great. And I'm like, that guy's, and like, how are they going to possibly keep an eye on you? Yeah. Or the, or the 100 other people in our age group. It's just too random, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's, yeah, there's definitely that, but. There's also what the little section of the rules that talks about uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I don't want to look it up now, but you know, basically your the general behavior and uh, conduct, right? So you hope to not have that, but as it's happened before, right? Well, and we don't even need to use the extreme crazy example that you know got everybody up in arms two years ago. Just well, I did it. <laughs> just just in general. Just in general, it's just it's just a thing, and it's just hard. I mean, it's just like open. It's just like the age group waves at Spartan. It's really hard to monitor, um, but all you're getting is is an entry. So I think that maybe helps. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that that's where not having money helps you, right? I guess not having prize money. Now I think some people thought they might pull a rabbit out of their hats and be like, "Hey, we found ten grand. It's for the winner." That was literally that I, I was I was saying that probably up until I don't know maybe July or so I was like you know what I bet they'll still just like like the old days like one like the no, the number one overall winner boom here's 10k I thought they might do it well but evidently not they still can it's not too late that's true but you don't think it's gonna happen uh, I don't I don't. I think it'd be neat, but I don't, I don't, I don't think so. What about you? I want them to. Yeah. I want them to, because I think we just lose an element of WTM that was always great, which is, you know, rooting for the packs and the Boons and the Atkinses, you know yep. what I mean? When they pass you, it's exciting. You know, they're going for it. It still will be somewhat cool. It will give some love to people who not gotten love. We're going to have all kinds of new podium people this year. Um, but I feel like like Atkins is definitely not coming, right? Like he's going to Correct. Sweden, as are some other people. Um, yep. they're, That's they're, a little, weekend. they're a little they're, – they're like the weekend apart. And I think if they oh, brought the tough. money back, then maybe people are like, okay, well, next year I'll do it then because they're going to do it next year too, and I, I won't do Spartan. I'll do this one. I don't know. Maybe it won't fucking matter, and we'll. But I feel like it was always just kind of a cool part of it. Yeah, and and my thing was, and the reason why I thought they might 
even when they announced that they were getting rid of prize money altogether back in like January, um, I always assumed they just meant everything except Worlds, only because Worlds had always had prize money. Even even when they were not offering prize money anywhere else, you know, Worlds always had prize money. So I thought, oh, okay, well that's that's always been the way it's been for the past seven years. So I could see that, you know, I just I just assumed w that WTM wasn't part of that list where it got cut. And then when I found that it was, I was like, oh, crap. Okay, well, again, not that it affects my race, because uh, I'm, I'm never in the running for the money, unless they were like, hey, guys whose last name starts with piss, who gets 50 miles, I'd be like, I got a shot. I got a shot. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I just realized that I needed to send a text. Hey, that's okay. Um, as long as you could, you hear my phone when I got a text. Was it was it binging in your ears? Mm -mm. You ever not. you ever you ever been around someone whose fucking phone just dings and you go, "Are you gonna fucking turn that on vibrate?" Because I want to hear your shit. I, I do. Yes, I actually know somebody whose whose tone for their just for texts is a quick little excerpt from the song from Pirates of the Caribbean, like a six second riff. And it goes all the time. And it's like, that's literally a little, it's like a ringtone going off that you're just not, not answering. So, yeah, it gets worse. Um, all right, my friend. Oh, so we, we, uh, we left off in our achievement awards. We covered the five-year anniversary, right? Did we cover the five, that? The five-year anniversary? You get, a, you get an orange and black legacy bib. We talked about that. Okay. All right. And of course, they have a 24 hour finisher, which is the black headband and the finisher medal. So, yeah. Well, now, I guess they won't, they haven't, they're not going to announce the on course challenges until what? The day of? Or are they going to give us some of that during the official announcement? Did they say? Oh, it says right there. Yeah. Stay I'm, tuned for more updates. Right. Now it says right now the single ticket for WTM is five fifty. Man, what what was it um, originally? Like at the end of last year, what do they charge? Three fifty, four fifty? Like what's the? No, no, it's always been it's always been up um, towards the, close to the event. It's always been up in the like in the fives. What is it if you buy it right away? Oh man, like when they do those January specials or the day after a... special. Yeah, um, I, I always miss those because I go, I should get, I just don't want to drop that money that next day. It's like four, I'm guessing. That's not an right, educated should we move guess. On, should we move on to the Champions Brunch? Champions, yes, let me scroll and find the Champions Brunch. There it is. So let's see, Champions Brunch. We'll close out the weekend in true mutter fashion with food, food, and more food. Let's celebrate the amazing feats you overcame. Honor the top winners. Recognize those in the community that have gone above and beyond. Oh, and did I mention bacon? That's just going to be, they're going to make the bacon joke now till the end of time. But that's okay. Matthew Lowe should be there, right? They said, let's do that. <clears throat> and they say here, faux show, as the kids say. When do you so think, let's do that. When do you, when do you think it's time to stop making black speak part of your like jokes? Uh, what? <laughs> is that what that is? I mean, I've done it, right? Yeah. And we're all trying to be funsies, right? So like I've done it in ORM posts, but you know, faux show, faux shizzle, up in the heezy. Can we, can we just let that shit yeah. go now? Can we let it go? Not because it's yeah, racially it, inappropriate, but just because it's tired. It's tired. Now that that I that I'm with you on. So oh, and by the way, the uh, it looks like the brunch is in the same spot, the Georgia International Convention Center, which to remind folks is not near the venue, but in fact near the airport, which I think is a like, good like almost adjacent to the airport. Yes, that was the best part for me because I had to catch a flight right after the champion exactly. Brunch. Exactly. So it was like, oh, here I am. Rental car return, and I'm gone. It was beautiful. People, people want to get home. It starts at noon. Doors at 11. Of course, last yeah. time people showed up at like 8:30. Um, you know, those WTMers. I just want to be part of the action. 
Um, I, it's your you last, know, it's 35 your last, bucks, 35 bucks ahead, by the way. It's your last chance to buy merch. Um, is that a WTM Georgia sweatshirt you're wearing? Because I think I have one of those. No, this is just a straight old camo Tough Mudder sweatshirt I got back in like 2013 or something. Right, my first tough, my first tough mutter hoodie. It's true. Okay. Then it says, uh, uh, "Stay tuned. The next update will be early November, and make sure to stop by and say hi at Toughest South." I'll What's be Toughest in Toughest South? South. I'm assuming you won't be in Toughest South. Where is it? That's uh, that's in three weeks in Dallas. Um, no, I will not be. Okay. I will be doing the heavy lifting there for the obstacle racing community. Is it Don't the worry. same weekend as Tahoe? No, Tahoe's the following weekend. I'll be there too. Will I see you in Tahoe? You'll be in Tahoe. If you're going to be there for Will, I'm going to be very mad. It's a, I'm going to be in both places for Will. But why would you, Tough Mudder makes why would you sense. Mad? Tough Mudder makes sense for you to be there for Will. You can't be on all the Spartan races too. I've only been at the uh, what? This will be my third. I'm throwing bows, speaking of inappropriate speak, I'm throwing bows to you and Goris at the finish line. I'm getting all the fucking good shots. <laughs> By the way, that guy is deceptively funny. I don't know if you ever really chat with him. That kid, I'm serious. He, he's got some great comedic timing, and he's like caught me off guard numerous times with his humor. So He's a, he's a, bright, he's a bright little diamond in our community. He absolutely is. And he takes amazing photographs. Takes so. amazing photographs. Sense of humor. Usually, I pluck the be- usually I pluck the best talent, right? Yeah. In this case, Will Scoot me. Will got this guy. Uh, just, Will Will Will's, found Will, me. Will's like the USFL. Will <laughs> came in and was like, you know what? We're gonna give all these Heisman Trophy winners five million bucks. What do you got, NFL? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't got shit. I don't have anything. You know, I got my, my, my wife just, on my wife just got home. Did you did you buy pillows? Awesome. Well, that's sweet. Talking to Carlo. My wife just made a weird face at me. She probably thought, why didn't he say Carlos? She said, she said, you sound like a nutcase. Oh, all right. I've been called worse. Uh, I think we covered everything. We did a a good job. It's a lot of stuff. I was just told by my sources Uh uh, that... Reg times, reg times will be coming as part of the next announcement. Oh, well, that's why we weren't able to find it. Although that seems like one to sort of I'd get out there. Skip. Yeah, like I think the awards you would do after, like, when do I show up? Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, how soon before my hot lap can I, uh, you know, register? Right. They're like, oh, good question. We'll cover that next week. But it's not next week. It's like in a month. Yeah, that's right. Man, so you're getting close. So you're you're not running. You're doing media for this too. I'll be doing media for Worlds this year. Yeah. When will, will you ever run it again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, uh, my guess is I will probably after this year, I will most likely run it next year. So. Does does Tough Mudder move the event next year? Ooh, that's a good, uh, that's a great question. I uh, selfishly, I I hope they do. No offense to your great to your great town, um, but uh, yeah. And, and the only reason I say I hope they do is because I don't know what my what my lifespan in OCR looks like. So I'm like. Do I have to? Because you know, if they do the four-year thing like they've done before, it's like, man, I don't know. Do I want to do three more years in Atlanta and then stick it out? I might want to like see what happens uh, next year. You know what I mean? But then where do they go? Who knows? Kansas? I don't um, know why I said Kansas. How about San this? Diego? How about how about this? How about in Tahoe you run the trail race? Uh, is that Sunday? It's no Sunday is the championship race. That's it on Sunday. Saturday, two thirty, the trail race. I will be there. What's the uh, distance on that? Ten k. Ten k. Wait a minute. The championship, the 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 go, the the actual world championship is on Sunday. 
It's good to know that OCR Report hires only the best, most informed media personalities. I've been I've been busy getting my my uh, Tough Mudder South information together. I would have gone to that next, but uh, Tahoe made a know. big they made a big announcement that that the championship has moved to Sunday, and their logic, which is bad logic, is that the community will want to just watch it so they want to race on saturday and then sunday they will line the streets of tahoe and watch the championship race no they won't they're going home um but that's their thought so uh oh well that's a bummer because that that uh i was looking forward to coming home saturday night and having a full night's rest before i go to work the next night i guess i'll be covering the event and then driving straight to work so that'll be great how long is the drive how long is the drive from tahoe to Truckee or wherever you live I'm uh, where I'm about from Squaw. It's about four hours. Okay, not horrible. No, nah, not horrible. And All if right. I sleep, but it's an early day, right? Because the is it what's that seven forty five start something like that? They actually, I think, are pushing it to like a nine, which is great. It still makes it an early day for you, though. You can still get out of there in the afternoon, easy. Yeah, that's and that's that's kind of the joy of doing the Spartan events, is that I can, you know, it's, it's only in a few hours before time is up, and I can get on a plane and come home. Uh, having said that, if I get you a media pass for the trail race, would you come run the trail race? On Saturday? Yes, I would do that. Okay. I'd be slow AF, as the kids say, but I would do it. Okay. Uh, tell people when and how they can enjoy the wonderful program you and your brother Josh put on, and then I'm going to let you go. Oh, uh, yes, the Piss and Cock Show. You can actually find us on the Obstacle Racing Media YouTube page, on the YouTube channel. Or you can just actually, if you just search Piss and Cox, P-I-S-N-Cox, <laughs> on YouTube, nothing else is going to show up, I promise. So and we've got, you know, 100-plus episodes out there that you can enjoy, and just us being idiots, talking about all things Tough Mudder community. Um, That's yeah, what we do. If you, if you like your news and information scattered with you know a lot of inappropriate jokes and yeah random sports and or music references yeah uh, it's a great show Beer, dick jokes we've got it all it's 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 a great show it shows up in my recently uploaded when i'm watching uh youtube on my roku tv at home i'm like oh recently updated recently uploaded a piss and cocks and then i sit and watch it and i laugh ha 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 see so do we we laugh at ourselves all the time that's why we're good friends <laughs>